Hello, welcome back to RC Video Reviews. Tonight we're putting another motor on the stand. This time it's one of my favorite brands. I've got a Leopard 2830 1290 KV. Before I get into the review, I want to let you know this video is sponsored by Altitude Hobbies. When I got ready to put the Volantic Sabre together, I reached out to Altitude about some new products they were carrying, asked them if they'd be interested in sponsoring a motor video for that airplane, and they said absolutely they'd like to. And I've always been a big fan of these Leopard motors. If you follow the channel for any length of time, you know that. This 2830 1290 kV motor was sent to me by Altitude Hobbies for review, and that's just what we're going to do. Well, let's start out by taking a look at the motor itself. And you guys know if you've watched any of my motor videos on Leopards, I really like these motors. They've got a really nice kind of satiny black, a little bit of gloss finish on the outside of the can. The markings are, I believe those are laser engraved. You can feel, you can feel it. There's a texture to that writing on the can. The machining has always been excellent on these motors, as are the bearings. And looking inside at the windings, they look very good. I don't think they're quite as neat as the Sunny Sky windings, but Sunny Sky claims to wind theirs by hand, and I have to believe that. I think these are probably machine wound, but there's really no way for me to know that, to be honest. They look good enough. There's no major skipping issues that I can tell. It looks like it's wound just fine. As you can see, this has a shaft protruding out the back. So if you want to change that and use a compression collet, you can. This motor is set up for a screw-on type prop adapter with a bullet nose, and I'll show you that in just a minute. The back of the motor has the traditional clip holding that shaft in place. The wires are a nice flexible silicone. There is no boot on the bottom, but the sheathing is very thick and rubbery feeling. So I don't think that's a problem. I've run plenty of Leopard motors and I've never encountered an issue. Just be aware, no boot down there if that means something to you. And then the prop adapter up front is the four hole screw on type. Leopard motors always come with a very full complement of hardware, including the cross mount. And hey Dave, you've been trying to tell me about these prop savers for my basher planes. Look, there's a prop saver, so I'm still not gonna use it though. I'm just gonna pay for the props. I don't like training wheels on my planes. <laughs> Dave's been trying to talk me into putting prop adapters on my planes. And I'm just not gonna wear training wheels, damn it. Okay, here are the O-rings for the prop saver, and then there's the screw-on prop adapter. That's the one I'll be using. That's the big boy prop shaft. <laughs> and then they, they include a couple of the female bullet connectors for the other end of your ESC, and a nut washer and other screws and things that you need to get this motor mounted onto your airplane. All right, let's take a quick measure of the can real fast here, and that looks like that's just shy of 29 millimeters. From the base to the prop adapter mounting plate, it is 27 millimeters. This is a 55 gram motor and the book says it has a constant amperage limit of 18 amps and a constant wattage limit of 244 watts and it claims it can pull 1260 grams of thrust. Let's see what the judge says about that. Alright, I've got the Leopard 2830 mounted on the judge and I'll be connecting these Roaring Top 1300 three cell packs. These are the same batteries I'll be flying on the plane. I'm just going to spin it up real quick and make sure the motor direction is correct. And I want to check the KV. Even though we know the KV on my unit is off by about 100 KV, I'm still going to check it anyway. It's 1488 unloaded. For the props, I'm going to run the same props that I ran on that Value Hobby G-Force E400. This is a 947 slow fly and the 9.5 that came with the Sabre. So I expect the results to be very close, but we're going to run them anyway. What the heck, we may as well get two tests out of the deal, right? Okay, the first prop I've got on is the 947 Slow Fly, and remember those are Gen Fan props that I also got from Value Hobby when I ordered the Sabre. So I'm going to spool this thing up. I'll be looking for RPM and thrust, and then we'll capture watts and the rest of the data after we spin it down. Yeah, there you go. You gotta love the way bearings on Leopard motors sound. They always sound excellent, and this one's no exception. Okay, time to spin it up. This is a 947 Slow Fly on the Leopard 2830 1290KV, spinning a three cell battery. Here we go.
Okay, I'm seeing about 109 on the temperature, 102, 111. Oh yeah, that feels good. No worries with that. That's just warm, not hot. So I am good with that. Okay, let's see. For amperage, we did 23.13. On 266 watts, we'll call it 266.2. And on the volt sag, we did 1138. Let's see. About 20 watts lighter and about... 30 grams of thrust lighter. Wait, am I comparing the right one? Yep. Okay, 1197 grams of thrust, 266.2 watts on 11.38 volts of sag and 23.13 amps. So that is the slow fly, 947 slow fly. Let's peel that one off and take a look at the 95. Okay, I've got a freshly topped off Roaring Top 3 cell 1300 battery plugged in. And this time we're running a 9.5 electric profile generic prop that came with the Volantix Sabre. Now I'm going to spin this up. Same thing. I'll be looking for RPM and thrust, and then we'll capture the rest after it stops. Here we go. Okay, I'm seeing about, it looks like 123, 121, 123. Yeah, it's fine. It's, that's hot. I'm right there, but you know, that's two full power runs back to back. So it's right there. That's, that's what I'd expect. Right, I'd say that's right at the peak. This is testing very similar to the other motor. Okay, on the last run, I measured 22.78 amps. We saw 11.37 volts on the sag. 266.7 watts with 1200 grams of thrust. So now I'm just going to do some quick math and fill in the rest of the sheet and then we'll wrap up the video. All right, I know this is a 500 gram plane and we made 1200 grams of thrust. So that gives me a 2.4 to 1 power to weight ratio, pretty much on both props. It was 2.4 and 2.39. So that's within, you know, rounding error. RPM wise, 11,740. This is a 55 gram motor. Efficiency was a standout number on this test at 4.5 to 1. That's thrust divided by watts. So we took 1200 grams of thrust on the best run divided by 266.7 watts and that gave us 4.5 to 1. Looking back at the g-force the efficiency was only 4.27 to 1. It made 20 more watts and about 14 more grams of thrust but it's not as efficient and I think that just straight up goes to the quality of the bearings. Everything else being equal in terms of the size, the dimensions of the motor, the props, the batteries, the test stand, everything else being equal the efficiency, you really see it in the bearings. So 4.5 to 1 compared to 4.2 to 1. So you might ask, well, John, what does that mean? That means you get more flight time. Because at the peak draw, this Leopard only draws 22.78 amps compared to 25. Which is, that's not nothing. That's a 3 amp difference, so 15%. 15% improvement in efficiency over that generic G-Force motor. This is a $27 motor, so it only 266 watts. The price per watt gets a little chippy. It gets a little expensive. This is not a cheap motor to run, especially compared to that generic G-Force that came in at 0 0.02 cents per watt. So a little more expensive, but here's what you get out of the deal. It sounds better. I'll be honest with you guys. I was out flying the Sabre the other day, and I hope Dave will chime in on the comments, but he was listening to it. He goes, why is it making that noise? And I said, well, it's the bearings. That's the, it's a cheaper motor, so the bearings are like that. What you'll get out of 
flying a Leopard motor is a more efficient motor. It'll probably run a little cooler and you'll get more flight time for the same prop and the same battery. Without any question, in case you're wondering, this absolutely is going in the Sabre and I'll be flying it on the Sabre. By the way, you guys keep an eye out for the next Sabre video because I have news for you on that. That plane, compared to the MX-2 and the Hummer, I've ranked them. If you want to hear what I have to say about that, make sure you watch the upcoming Sabre video because they are ranked at this point. If you like this kind of content and you're a regular visitor on RC Video Reviews, please consider subscribing. It really matters to small channels like mine to have subscriber growth because that helps us with positioning. When we put videos out, my videos get better placement when, with more subscribers. So your interaction, and for those of you who are regular subscribers that don't talk in the comments, you guys need to get in and join too. I know you're there. I can see the, I can see the watch count. But let's see you guys get involved. Leave a comment. How about a thumbs up too? That'd be really nice. You know, this is hard work. It'd be nice if you can't leave a comment, at least just give me a thumbs up and let me know, hey, that was pretty cool. Thanks for sharing. All of that stuff helps the videos get better placement. Engagement matters. So I count on you guys to engage with the videos. I hope you enjoyed this content and it's worth a thumbs up to you. If it is, please do it. I'd appreciate that. And then definitely share the video. All right, thanks to Altitude Hobby for sponsoring this video. That's all I've got for tonight. Take it easy.